Before we start this video, a large thank you to Army of Chickens, Drunken Dracon, Emily, Adnan, Connor, and Phantom Bite for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner and Dark Matter for their continued support of the channel this month on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the video, gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Today we are going to start the character creation menu. So you're going to be able to select your class here and kind of change how your character looks. So let's go over and hit 2D in the scene view. Let's go to where we have title screen background. Let's rename this to title screen main menu. I'm doing this because we have title screen load menu, and now we're going to have title screen uh, character creation menu. So right click under title screen canvas, create a new empty game object, call it title screen character creation menu or whatever name makes the most sense for you to know what this is. So it stands out. It's very nice and clean. You can easily see what it is at first glance. Let's make it, uh, basically the size of the screen by holding alt and stretching it out. Make sure it sits below the main menu on the hierarchy. Copy the image on the main menu and then paste it as a new component on the character creation menu. So now it should cover up your main menu like so. Now I'm going to just create a simple, uh, like a title header here. I'm just going to create a new text using text mesh pro. And this is just going to be character creation. So when we open up this menu, it just is a little obvious uh, where we're at. I'm not going to spend a lot of time making this pretty, um, but I will just put some loose titles and some organization here so it isn't so unsightly. Now I'm going to pin this to the top left, or anchor it rather, because it is in the top left of the screen. I'm going to change the uh, the game object name to title. Now, you can see here we got 1920 by 1080 as a reference resolution. I want three panels on this menu. So, simple math, 1920 divided by three. Each panel should be 640 in width. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, and again, you can use a different design, but I'm just going to copy what I got done in Neff very loosely. So I'm going to make it the height 1080, because that's a reference resolution height. And then 640 because this is a third of the resolution in the width, and we're gonna have three equal size panels. I'll call this one the middle panel. The ankle, ankle, <laughs> anchor point is in the center, uh, and then we're gonna duplicate that. Make one for the left side, anchor it to the left side of the screen. I'm gonna call this left panel, and then we can duplicate one of these panels one more time. Bring it over to the right side of the screen, call it right panel, and make sure you anchor it on the right side of the screen by clicking this little box right here and anchoring it here. Okay, so the left panel will be our main menus, the middle panel will be our secondary menus, and the right panel will be our character preview. Okay, so let's go ahead now, and I'm just going to make some comments in these so it's very clear when we come back. So left menu, menu options, this is like pick your class, select your name. Middle panel is a secondary menu, so like when your class menu pops up, select, you know, knight or uh, warrior, whatever you want to say. And then your right panel is going to be the character preview. We're going to do the character preview in this video, and we're going to do a, uh, we're going to set up the UI here for the main menu. So... I'm gonna make a background uh, image in our left panel. I'm gonna call this main menu options. And I'm just going to basically size it so it's almost the size of our parent, but not quite. I'm gonna make the color still dark, but not as dark as the background, so it stands out. And now I'm going to make a button in here using button text mesh pro. And I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, customizing the button and you know the colors and whatnot, but I strongly recommend you keep a consistent look throughout your UI. So for example, um, if the button highlights are a certain color in your main menu, you should make them the same color here, um, or at least very similar, to keep kind of a consistent style throughout all of your UI. So I am going to change the highlighted color and selected color to red, so it's very clear when we have it selected. And I'm going to change this button text to name, because this is going to be the button we hit when we want to name our character. Now, when I have that uh, in a manner in which I like it, I'm just going to go ahead and add a vertical layout group here now on this uh, this parent object. And I'm going to make it so middle center. We can actually try middle top too. And I'm going to duplicate this button a few times. So we got one for name, one for class, and one for start game. We'll make sure the start game button is working too so we don't break anything when this video is uh, done. And you can still start the game as you would normally. So we got name, class, and start game. So as it suggests, Name will change the name of your character, class will select the character's class, and start game will finalize anything you've been doing, and it will start the game with the character that you have created. Uh, so I am actually going to not force expand this. I'm going to set the spacing to say uh, 25. That's probably all right. Yeah, it looks nice. Let's try and see what it looks like at the top. So if we go up to the top and we put spacing 25 from the top, maybe 100, a little bit more, 125. That's almost too much. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm I'm a bigger fan of it in the middle center. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it in the middle center for now. If you have more buttons, maybe upper center, but this looks good. So uh, we have our three buttons here. Let's go ahead and open up uh, the buttons and let's add a component to the name button. And we're gonna use our old script player UI select button on enable. This makes it so when we open this menu, it will automatically select the name button for us. Next, let's go down to the start button uh, and we're gonna open up the title screen manager. You can see we have start new game. 
That's actually what we want to call in the start button. We call this now when we hit new game, but we're going to change that. So go to the start button, drag in title screen canvas, and go to title screen manager, start new game. Now, let's go to the original new game button where we called this uh, before, before we had the character creation menu. Now let's change what's going on here. So go to the title, go down to new game. You can see here it's start new game. We don't want that. So let's go make a new function now. We're going to make this above start new game on title screen manager or wherever you want to put it. Public void attempt to create new character. So if we can do this, we're going to go to the character creation menu and then from there we can start new game. So let's save that. Now let's go over and let's drop in this new function under new game but start button and attempt to create new character. So we need a way to know if we have a free slot. So we're going to handle that. But first let's make a game object serializable field for our title screen character creation menu because we are going to open this menu if we have a character slot. All right, next, let's go to the world save game manager. I believe that's where we're actually uh, checking for these profiles. And I think we, we made a method a long time ago to check to see if a profile exists. So let's make a public bool has free character slot. So we're just going to use this to see if we have any free character slots. Now we can uh, start by returning false. Um, and if we have one, we're going to return true basically. So let's go on to attempt to create a new game. We can copy all of this, but we're only going to use these if checks. And now, you can use a different method if you haven't actually made hard-coded slave slots. I did because there's just 10. Honestly, you can make it to an enum or a list, or you could you know, make it so there's not a limit. That's entirely up to you, but I'm gonna keep going via the method I've done it before. So we're gonna check to see if files one through 10 exist. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna assign the save file name using the character slot, and then if the file does not exist, we're gonna return true because that means we do have a free slot. So if files 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 don't exist, if any of those don't exist, we're going to stop and return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And I'm going to clean up this code just a little bit so it looks a bit neater. I'm just going to get rid of the spacing here on the if statements, and that looks a lot better. Very nice, very easy to read. Cool, looks great. All right, so you can see we're checking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And if any of these slots are free, we return true. We do have space. If not, we return false at the bottom. Cool, now let's use our new reference function to determine if we could create a new character slot by going over and saying if world save game manager dot instance dot has character slot, then we're going to open up the character creation menu. Otherwise, we're going to send that pop up that says, nope, you can't do that. We have no free character slots. And that pop up, I think it's down here where we have this too. Uh, let's see, attempt to create a new game. We reference that. Yes, okay, it's referenced here. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste that. It's actually on the title screen manager. So I could have just solved that for look down a bit more. But there we go. Display no free character pop up. All right, cool. So what happens if we do have a free slot? Well, let's make a new function now for opening the character creation menu. So public void open character creation menu. And if you want, you can make a public void for closing character creation menu too, if you want to be able to back out of your character creation. So we're going to call open character creation menu. Excellent. Now we can save that. And now under open character creation menu, almost forgot, we actually have to use the function to actually enable the game object for the menu. So under open, we'll say, what did I call that just now? Character title screen, character creation menu dot set active. True. Otherwise, when we close it, we're going to set it to false. And now you might want to auto select the button in the main menu again when you're closing it, depending on what you want to do. So if you close it, the character creation menu, you might want to auto select the button that you last selected, which will be new game. Uh, just adds a bit of polish, a bit of um, user friendliness. So I'm going to go in now and drag in the variable for title screen character creation menu, hit new game, boom, opens up, look at that, hit start game, and it is working as intended so far, cool. So it does start a new game. Let's close it out. Now let's go back into the Unity project again. If I go to the scene view here, and I take off my 2D view, and the game is playing by the way, if I go into the plane here, watch what happens when I hit the start button, because as you remember, we're starting a network and our player spawns right there. So we're going to use this location because he's floating on an invisible plane in case you don't remember uh, to actually set up a view or a character preview when you're creating your character. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create an empty parent on this plane. I'm going to call it title screen player preview or character preview, whatever you want to call it, whatever makes the most sense to you. I'm going to go over here and we're going to basically just give it a camera. So let's create a camera. Let's make sure it's facing and uh, the proper direction. So we're gonna call this preview camera. And just so I can see what this looks like, let's just grab the player prefab real fast and temporarily drop it in here under the plane. There we go. Let's get the camera and back it off a little bit. Let's make sure we rotate it so it's facing the direction of the game object properly. So it should be 180. Uh, I've said 170. I need to fix that. There we go, 180. And make sure you center it and stuff. 
And now, how are we going to get this camera preview onto the UI? Well, we're going to use something called a render texture. Uh, so you can see here there's an output texture on this camera. It's very easy to use. So I'm going to go to the assets here and create a new one. And I have a lot of stuff. I'm going to quickly organize this. So just one second, guys. I'm going to pause. So I'm just going to drag these animations into the animation folder and all this other stuff. There we go. Now we're back. Create, right-click, render texture. Here it is. So create this and then call it whatever you want. So you're going to know what it is. So I'm going to call it player preview render texture. And I am going to just look at Nephilim uh, because I have some settings here. I'm going to take dynamic scaling and I am going to change it to two samples for anti-aliasing. And now the size, um, it should be the size of your uh, canvas scaling. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody in the comments. Future Seb here, make sure you set this to 1920 by 1080. I do it in a second, but I kind of forget to in this clip. So the size for uh, your width and height here should be 1920 by 1080 or whatever the canvas scaling size is that you have set to on your canvas. All right, so go and remove the audio listener from the new camera that we dropped in. And then go over to 2D and let's go and actually create a little window for this character preview. So I'm going to enable my character creation menu. I'm going to go to the right panel. I'm just going to create a little background panel like I did with the menu. So let's make an image and then make it however big you want. This is just like a little trim for the, the camera so it doesn't look as unsightly uh, as if we just slap the texture there. So I'm going to make it about 500 by 900 and I'll call this image character preview. I'll change the color to the exact same color we have. Oh, on tick Raycast target too on both these images, the background images that we just made. I almost forgot, just save some memory because we're never checking to click that. You don't need Raycast target. Uh, it is just a waste. So I am going to paste this color here. looks good. I'm going to create a new raw image now. So let's go to UI and do a raw image right here. And let's make this uh, whatever size we want for the actual render texture. So I'm just going to stretch it and like size it so it's a bit off of the trim, just so it looks a bit nice. And I'm going to get my player render texture. And that looks unsightly what is going on. Um, so let's make sure we're going to tick on tick rake as target. Maybe set native size here. We'll actually make it the exact same size render texture. Just saying. Uh, so I'm going to center this now and not stretch it. And you can play around with the size of this. I'm going to go back to the render texture here. And you can see here the skybox is actually in the preview. If you want to not have the skybox in the preview, what you can do is just actually go to your scene lighting over here and actually change the lighting in the environment and set the skybox to none. So alternatively too, you could change the camera color from skybox to background, or you can, again, you can just remove the skybox itself from the scene because this is the main menu scene. It doesn't really need a skybox, so just set it to none. Now we can also add a spotlight to this character so we actually can see it better because if we remove the skybox too, it's gonna be a little bit darker, but I do like the lighting. If you just add, just go down to your camera and parent a spotlight under it and just kind of play around the settings until you like it. So uh, depending on what color scheme you're going for, obviously I'm gonna change to like more like a yellow light um, the white light can be a bit harsh, so just play around the intensity so it doesn't look too bright. This is actually pretty low, so I'm going to turn it up. And keep in mind, too, if you have post-processing, it's going to change how this looks in the game view, so check in the game view as well. Um, or rather, if you have it enabled in the scene view, it should show up there as well. So this still looks a bit off. Um, I'm going to change the field of view to 50 as well. Just back it off a little bit more like that on the camera. I'm just going to play around this now until I think it looks good. Uh, it's not centered, so I'm going to recenter the camera because it wasn't centered. Now. Let's make this 1920 by 1080. Um, I actually did not have it set that way. And then let's go to the image here and set native size. And I'm gonna resize this and hold shift. So I'm gonna downscale it so it fits inside this preview box just like that. And it keeps its, uh, its kind of ratio. So I'm gonna center it here. And you don't need to worry about the arms being a little bit outside for two reasons. First, let's center this. One, the hands are gonna drop in the idle state when we start the game, but also we can add a mask. So if we go to the character preview here now and add a mask, you can see anything outside of the bounds. So this is a rec mask, 2D. Anything outside of this frame now is cut off. And you can also fade it out with softness here. So you can see instead of just cutting off abruptly, it'll start fading the edges. And that looks really nice. So it looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and save that now. And if I delete the player and we actually go into the game and test it, we should see a player pop up in the preview when we start. So first I'm gonna disable the character creation menu. And then I'm gonna save this and start the scene. And then I am going to press start and go into the new game. So let's press start, new game, there we go. Preview right there, looks good too. Lighting looks nice, not too harsh, I'm a fan. All right, let's make this guy um, capable of rotation so we can actually spin him around and preview what he looks like. All right, so let's go to the game object we have our plane, um, the parent object, the main one, and let's call this uh, player preview uh, rotation or rotator, uh, title screen player preview rotator. That's a mouthful, but it is very clear. 
So on the title screen, player preview game object, I'm adding a script. Let's delete the start and update functionality as is per tradition. And then I'm going to reference our player controls. Uh, it's like our input, same thing we use to control our player in game. And we're going to do the same thing here we did with our input manager. We're going to use an on enable, uh, on enable and on disable. And we're going to say if player controls equals null, player controls is equal to new player controls. And then we are going to set up the player controls here by saying player controls dot enable. And we're going to actually set up uh, the player controls inputs here by referencing the player camera. And then I believe it's called movement. Yes, it's called movement dot performed uh, plus equals I equals greater than this weird syntax here. And we're going to reference this with a vector to variable. So basically, we're going to take our camera movement every time we perform it, we're going to feed the values of the input back to this variable, the vector two, because we're moving it with the joystick that's up, down, left and right. And it's going to feed back to this vector two variable that's up, down, left and right. So very simple. Now we're going to use the left and right portion of this variable because we're just going to rotate this uh, left to right. So let's make a private float look angle. And uh, let's make an on disable first and actually disable these controls if we disable the, the object. So player controls that disable. Now on update, we're going to do a couple things here. Um, need to make a couple new variables is actually as well. We're going to add um, private float horizontal input. So this is basically just going to register when we have some input or we're moving the joystick on the horizontal axis. So we're going to say horizontal input is equal to the camera input dot X. So we're taking one axis of that vector two, and then we're assigning that to our horizontal input. So whenever you're moving back and forth, left and right, it will change the value of the float horizontal input. Then we're going to say look angle is plus equal to our horizontal input times, let's make a private float rotation speed. So basically we're taking the input of our uh, joystick on the X axis, and then we're moving the look angle that's the rotation angle of this little uh, plane by how much we're moving our joystick times our rotation speed. Then we're going to say vector three camera rotation is equal to vector three dot zero. Then we're going to say camera rotation dot y is equal to look angle. Next, we're going to say quaternion target rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler. And then we're going to pass the camera rotation. And then we're going to come out and say transform dot rotation is equal to target rotation. And that's it. So let's save that now. We can give it a, a whirl. I think rotation speed five is going to be way too low. So let's actually serialize these variables if you want to see them. Serialize the rotation speed for sure so you can change it. If you want to see the horizontal input, the look angle, um, and the camera input, serialize those as well, although you don't need them. I will make a header for camera input, and then I'll make another header here for rotation. So camera input can be camera input and horizontal input. And then we can say header rotation. That will be our look angle and our rotation speed. Let's save that. I'm going to go into the game here now. Change rotation speed to say about 25 should be okay, maybe. Uh, let's just try it out and see. Press start, new game. That's still pretty slow. Works though, looks good. So let's say rotation speed. Let's try 150. Uh, 150 feels very nice. Okay, cool. Well, there you go, guys. You have a very good start on this character creation menu. So in the next video, we're going to set up uh, so we can name our character. And then we're going to set up so we can actually choose a class. So for classes, we're going to make basically a set of predetermined classes. And depending on which class you pick, it will change your gear, uh, your weapon, and your stats. So I highly encourage you right now, with the knowledge you've been armed with in this series and the experience you've gathered up to this point, to go ahead and attempt to implement two classes on your own. Make it so when you select the class button, you open a secondary menu. And from there, you can select however many classes you want to implement, and when you select that class, make it change the gear and the stats on your character and also the weapons if you want. Now, we don't have stats yet in the game outside of vitality and stamina and such, but you can add those in yourself as well. So again, I highly encourage you to go ahead and give that a shot. I know you are 100% capable of doing that if you made it this far in the series. It's a great learning experience. And uh, if you get it messed up or you don't know what to do and you get stuck, I'm just going to do it next week anyway, so it's totally fine. As always, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. A special thank you to my patrons. It is because of each and every one of you to keep doing this, and the series is still alive. So for that, you have my thanks. I will see you guys next week.